There are 20 mainline Zelda games with amazing stories, amazing gameplay, released on 12 different consoles in the U.S., and all can be played with just three controllers. Yeah. To show how I got to the three controllers, we'll have to go game by game and console by console to see what can be played where and how. But first, let's set some parameters. We're talking only using official hardware and software for this. And we're talking about things you can currently get in early 2024. So no virtual console, unfortunately. To do this, we're going to have to use alternate versions of the games and additional console hardware. And I could just show each actual console and the games associated with it, but instead I made cutouts of all the consoles. Though I will use the actual games, because this took way too long. And since I lost some of my game boxes, I'll use these cases I got on Etsy several years ago. But I don't remember where, sorry. But they'll make it easier to see which games I'm talking about. Let's show which console each game originally released on. I'm placing Twilight Princess on the Wii because it released on the Wii a few weeks before the GameCube. Though some argue the GameCube is the original, I'm just not going to do that today. I'm also putting Breath of the Wild on the Switch even though both versions released on the same day because it was promoted as a Switch game. And here are all the handheld only consoles in their original releases. Now let's go game by game. The first two games, The Legend of Zelda and The Adventure of Link, are all on the same consoles. There are two ways to play them on the GameCube, either the GameCube Collector's Edition disc or the classic NES series versions for the Game Boy Advance using a Game Boy Player. And the GameCube versions can be played on Wiis that can play GameCube games. The Game Boy Advance versions can be played on any DS with the Game Boy Advance slot, though not all have it. A Link to the Past can be played on several consoles, including this version of it for the Game Boy Advance, that could be played on the Game Boy Advance, some DS's, and the GameCube with the Game Boy Player. I won't show all alternate versions of the game or go through how you play each game if I've mentioned it before, but there is a spreadsheet I show at the end of this video. Link's Awakening has three versions, the original and the DX version, which can be played on all the same consoles. That's right, DX can be played on the Game Boy and the Super Game Boy. And it can be played on most Game Boy Advances because most except the Micro, are backwards compatible with the Game Boy and the Game Boy Color. You can also get a Switch exclusive version as well. Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask are all on the same consoles. Ocarina of Time has two GameCube discs, this one shown here with the Master Quest, and also the Collector's Edition that comes with Majora's Mask and the first two Zelda games. And like before, some Wiis can play GameCube games. Oracle Seasons and Ages, not surprisingly, can be played on all the same consoles. Quick note here about the Super Game Boy. It can only play original Game Boy games, not Game Boy Color except for a few. It can play Link's Awakening DX as seen here on the back of the box, but not the Oracle series from what I can tell. Though I've not tried it since I don't have a Super Game Boy, Wind Waker has two versions. The original is for the GameCube and can be played on some Wiis, and the HD version is for the Wii U. Four Swords Adventures has a single player mode that can be played on the GameCube or some versions of the Wii, but multiplayer requires multiple Game Boy Advances and Link cables. The game is playable and beatable in single player, so that's good. The Minish Cap is a Game Boy Advance game, so it can be played on the Game Boy Player or with certain DS's. Twilight Princess has a GameCube version that can be played on some Wiis, a Wii version that can be played on Wii U, and a Wii U exclusive HD version. Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks are DS games, and the 3DS is backwards compatible with most DS games, including these two. Skyward Sword has a Wii U version that can also be played on the Wii U, and the Switch version seen here. The Link Between Worlds and Triforce Heroes are 3DS exclusives. They weren't even on the Wii U Virtual Console. Breath of the Wild has both a Wii U and a Switch version, with some minor differences. And lastly, Tears of the Kingdom is only available on the Switch currently. So now that we've gone game by game, let's go console by console, which will show more of how I made my list and might make things a little easier to understand. The NES has the first two Zelda games only. 
the SNES has a link to the past, and if you use the Super Game Boy, you can play Link's Awakening and Link's Awakening DX. The Nintendo 64 has Ocarina of Time and its direct sequel, Majora's Mask. The GameCube with the Game Boy Player allows you to play 12 of the first 13 games. We'll get to that one exclusion later. The Wii has its own Zelda games, and several versions of the console can even play GameCube disc games. The Wii cannot play Game Boy Player games, though. The Wii U can play Wii games, but no mainline Zelda game has spent any time as an exclusive on the Wii U, making it the only console to have that distinction. The Switch, though, currently only has one game that is an exclusive to it, but four total can be played on it, not counting the Nintendo Switch Online. The Game Boy can play Link's Awakening and its DX version. The Game Boy Color has three games released for it, including the DX version of Link's Awakening, though it can play the original as well. One Game Boy Advance gets you most of the handheld games released up to this point. It's almost time to talk about that one game that I keep avoiding. Almost. The DS had two games and some versions can play all Game Boy Advance games. The 3DS plays DS games and it has remakes of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. And if you want to play multiplayer Triforce Heroes, you need up to three 3DSs. But fortunately you can play single player. It's so nice that Four Swords Adventures and Triforce Heroes are multiplayer games with easy single player options. The Nintendo Switch Online currently offers several older games, but the service of course won't last forever and will someday be discontinued like the Wii, Wii U, and 3DS, virtual consoles, and eShops. There are other officially released consoles that have Zelda games on them, such as the NES and SNES classics here. Also, the Zelda Game & Watch has the only version outside the original cartridge for the Game Boy of the original Link's Awakening. In China, I got the IQ player, which had Ocarina of Time on it. This is not an exhaustive list of all the consoles. I'm sure I'm missing several, but some consoles are just renamed versions of what we got in the US, and others I'm not sure. It took a while to figure this out. Here's my first, second, and third draft of the list. If you look closely, you can tell there are errors on all of them. And here's my final PDF showing all the games, consoles, and versions of games. Hopefully without mistakes, but I'm not perfect. So if you see any mistakes, you can tell me in the comments and I'll update corrections in the description. With all this information on the Zelda games and the consoles and hardware, you can see how I narrowed it down to these three controllers without using Virtual Console, the eShop, or the Nintendo Switch Online. On the GameCube, you can play The Legend of Zelda, Adventure of Link, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, The Oracle Games, The Wind Waker, Four Swords Adventure, The Minish Cap, and Twilight Princess. With some games need the Game Boy Player. You can play Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, A Link Between Worlds, and Triforce Heroes on the 3DS, and Skyward Sword, Breath of the Wild, and Tears of the Kingdom on the Switch. Or you can mix and match a few of these games with your console of choice between these three. So that's all. Thanks for watching. Wait. Four Swords. Oh yeah, I kept hinting at that, didn't I? So let's talk about the Four Swords problem. So as you can see from the manual, in order to play the game, you need two to four Game Boy Advances, and only Game Boy Advances will do. Same number of copies of the game as Game Boy Advances being used, and one to three link cables depending on how many are playing. This is the only way you play the game. So at minimum, you need two Game Boy Advances, one link cable, and two copies of the game to play. Or if you're lucky, you got the free anniversary version on the 3DS. It came out for the 25th anniversary, and then a few years later. This version has local multiplayer for two to four players, but it also has a single player option. But unfortunately, it has not been available for download in 10 years. So there you have it, the GameCube with the Game Boy Player, the 3DS, and the Switch play all the mainline Zelda games, with one asterisk, of course. Or better said, all the mainline Zelda games with the single player option can be played on these three consoles. I had fun making this. I hope you had fun or learned something while watching this video. And if you have any more questions or comments on this, please let me know. Thanks for watching.
Oh, and if you want to add to your collection, I got this coupon from Nintendo Power. It probably still works, right? 